Welcome to the EXP Group, one of the leading providers of business training solutions. Please enjoy this presentation and visit us on the web at www.theexpgroup.com for more information. Hello again and welcome to the EXP Group's training video for ACCA Paper P3 Business Analysis. Those of you that were with us yesterday will remember that we covered Kurt Lewin's. We covered first of Kurt Lewin's change models, the unfreezing, moving, refreezing model, also known as the iceberg model. That was yesterday. What we're going to do today is look at another one of Lewin's models, and this is called the force field analysis. So we are now on page 33 of the express notes. And again, as a reminder, these express notes can be downloaded free of charge from our website, www.theexpgroup.com. OK, so what do we have here on the force field analysis? Just to run through this diagram. To start with, we have the current state. So this is a situation we are in at the moment. And what force field analysis is talking about is all about change. So we've got the current state and we're trying to change it and move it to a desired state. This is where we want to be. Current state and the desired state. Now there will be various forces pushing for change. And in the diagram here, this is the, well, these are the, the, the green arrows. So these are the driving forces which are pushing for change. On the other side, you'll see restraining forces. So these are the forces which are resisting change. These are the forces that do not want the change. Now, you'll notice the, the length of the arrows are different and the thickness of the arrows are different so for example in this situation this arrow here at the top we've got a very thick arrow but not very long this one here we've got a very long thin arrow now the length of the time so that the length of the arrow represents the length of the time so the length equals time. Okay, so if it's a long arrow, it means that that force has been there for a long time. The, the thickness, so the thickness of the arrow equals the strength. So the thicker the arrow, the stronger the force. So if you look at this example here, then that is a very sort of relatively short time that that force has been present but it's a thick arrow so it's a quite a strong force the one below it the long thin one it's been there a long time but it's a relatively um, thin force so it's not very strong okay so how do we go about change how do we go about encouraging change making change successful just to use this diagram here bit more detail to explain how it works. If we want to encourage change, if you want change to be more, to be quicker, to be more successful, we basically have two options. We can either increase the driving forces or decrease the resisting or the restraining forces. Okay, let's uh, go back to the example we gave yesterday about a school. So yesterday in the video we were saying there's a badly performing school we want to change that to become a good school a good performing school. And We used Lewin's iceberg method with the unfreeze, change and refreeze method. Now if you look at the force field analysis for the school so we're trying to change it from in simple terms from a bad school with bad results and not very successful to a good school in simple terms. Now what would the forces be pushing driving for change? 
could be parents, for example. Parents could be here. It could be the government, the local government, or the government. They, they want good school results for the, the benefit of the community at large. It could be the local community. So the local community want a good school within their, their vicinity. It could be certain school children. So certain children want to attend a good school. What would the restraining forces be? Well, that could be, I know, certain trade unions, for example. Trade unions who are worried that people will be losing jobs. Could be lack of finance. Could be a restraining force that prevents it. So remember, in order to encourage successful change, successful movement, in order to go from the current state to the desired state, we can either increase the driving forces or decrease the restraining forces. So an example of how we could decrease the, tr the restraining forces would be, okay, we have an agreement with the trade unions that we will not make teachers redundant for a certain period and we will offer them free training. That is an example of what we can do to reduce the restraining force from, for example, the trade union. Okay, just the rest of this, uh, this page, in effect, just read through that at home because that confirms what I've said so, th so far during this video. Okay, that uh, completes today's video, so thank you for, for listening and hopefully you'll be back again tomorrow for the next video.